Hi, Filmatics. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we have a great show for you. We have the fabulous casting director, Leslie Brown. She has worked on so many projects, including music video, United, and the feature film, Nomad. Leslie, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Marilyn. I love the show, and I am definitely an addict now. I think I've always been a film addict. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And um, so when you're growing up, did you have like a film that, you know, just that you loved growing up? Well, I definitely had a lot of films that I loved growing up, but there was one that was really pivotal for me, and that's the movie Terms of Endearment, which I really connected with that film because it was at a turning point for me where I transitioned from being a teenager to being a grown-up, and it was on so many levels. I just felt that each of the characters spoke to me, you know. I... I'm a fan of James Crooks. Um, you know, he wrote that and also directed it along with a couple other films you might remember, Broadcast News, As Good As It Gets. You know, his writing is just so real. And then the cast that he pulled together for that film with Jack Nicholson and Shirley McLean, McLean and Deborah Winger, they just felt like I knew them, you know? And so for me, that was kind of, even though it wasn't a coming of age film, it was when I came of age. Yeah, that is a very special and a beautiful film. I really, really love that one. And then also, um, you know, what film, Criterion film, inspired you to go on your path of being a casting director? Well, I did start out in theater as a performing artist, you know, doing some theater stuff in high school and some dance. Um, so I didn't start off immediately on the path to become a casting director per se, but the films that did stick with me, there was one in, well, honestly, it's really hard to pick one out of the criterion. So there's two, one is the princess bride and the other one is the breakfast club. Nice. And maybe, yeah, you know, good one. I just love fairy tales <laughs> and, you know, so it was a little hard for me to pick between those two, you know, the princess bride, not your average everyday run of the mill, ho-hum fairy tale, sort of a, for me, it was like Shakespeare meets Monty Python, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. And I love both of those. That was awesome all. for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and The Breakfast Club, I felt like I could just relate to each of the characters. And the casting in particular was very real to me. They, they, were, they were people that I went to high school with. And each of my friends in my circle at that time, we could relate to someone on that screen. It didn't feel like they were actors. It felt like documentary with some extra cinematic flair. And I think maybe that could have been a, Point that planted the seed for me where I started to think about the, the choices of people that were put into those roles <clears throat> where they were not just actors to me. Yeah, that was a really great film. You're right. It seemed like they were, re I mean, they were so believable. And um, yeah. the, the, the films in the 80s were uh, really special, too. Yeah. And um, so you started out as a dancer and an actor. I love it. And uh, so you probably had some mm -hmm. favorite directors that you liked as well. Definitely. Definitely. Um, but I think they're more contemporary directors than than from that time period when I was growing up. You know, of course, I love all the directors that were present then, but we've had such great people come out of the woodwork since then. And so the one that stands out for me that I, you know, my flash answer is Quentin Tarantino. He's a writer first, and that's what one of the things that makes his work so interesting. He doesn't just bend to blockbuster expectations. And rather than that, he sets the trends, you know? And, and so there's always something in his movies that he's directing that, takes you by surprise, you're not ready for it. And and I think he appeals to a, a wide demographic, but it's not because he tries to, it's just because he has a story to tell. So young people and women and men and you know are all gonna love it and get something out of it. And one of and I guess um my favorite film shot is um it was a written by Tarantino film, True Romance. And I just love the scene where Clarence tells Alabama that he killed Drexel. And she says to him in tears, I think what you did is so romantic and then kisses him. It just, it was so, unex such unexpected writing, you know, you're not sure why she's crying and, you know, he's kind of proud and going through all of this, you know, conflict internally. Why is she crying? I just did this thing for her. And then she says what she says and I just melted. That was great for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quentin and I actually got to meet him and he, he's just super nice to everyone. And uh, just, he's a fun person too. And his personality, he talks fast like me and he's Italian. So when I saw him, I go, 
ah, you know, my path to directing because he is this very fast speaker. And so he he's kind of like, um, I looked up to him as well. So great choice with director. We love Quentin Tarantino. And um, so um, was there any favorite scenes from a movie that you that really uh, stays in your mind as something that you're is one of your favorites? Absolutely. Aliens, directed by Ridley Scott. When Ripley gets in the mechanical hydraulic forklift and she says to the alien, get away from her, you bitch. You're <laughs> referring to the little girl Newt she's protecting. Maybe it's not the most fantastical dialogue. Maybe it's not an amazing, you know, epic scene with explosions and stuff. But it was emotionally charged for sure, you know, and, and those are the scenes you remember. Yeah, I remember that scene too. Yeah, you de definitely stays in your mind. You're like, oh, you know, cause, especially because she's a woman and she was just like, you know, you know, super strong. And you're like, yeah, get her, Ripley. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know? And I think I think that scene, you know, um, if you if you look up that movie now and you look at critiques and commentary on that movie, there's a lot of impact that film had in terms of roles that women had and the casting that women had and the way stories are told about women. And I think that movie was not about a woman. It was about a person and a character and what she was going through. And she happened to be this really strong, badass woman that all of us wanted to be, you know? <laughs> and, and, and so I think what makes that for me um, so impactful is that it wasn't a statement film. It was a, well, yeah, of course, she's just like that. You know, it, it made it commonplace that women were that strong. It made it, of course, that's how I feel. Yeah, great, great writing, great directing, great acting, great casting, and a great script. So everything comes together and, and you know, certainly stays in so many people's minds as a favorite. And I heard that you have a favorite line from a movie. Can you tell us? <laughs> yes, I'm... Um, I'm a sucker for a Cinderella story. It's one of my favorite stories of, you know, fairy tales growing up and all the different variations of it. And so I really love the movie Ever After with Drew Barrymore playing um, the character Danielle. Um, so for film, my favorite line is when she's about to go to the ball and she's all by herself and she's so exposed but beautiful, you know, and she just has to remind herself that she's amazing. And she says, just breathe. <laughs> sometimes that's all you need to hear is just those two little words and it resonates in any context but then there's another line from tv because you know we're in an age where it's not just film so tv sort of you know i've got some hours under my belt and there's a scene with courtney cox and i don't even really remember what the scene is but there's all of this chaos and you know how there's drama with the one character and another character and she just stops and she goes things just got interesting <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't know why that's one of those things that i can quote when there's drama on a set or drama in casting and and you have to make a change on the fly you know that's sort of a mantra for me to just breathe you know things just got interesting we're gonna we're gonna get through this yeah especially you know what 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 a day yesterday what what a um what a world we live in things are changing and yes things just got interesting <laughs> i love that line that's right <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's right yeah and uh yeah uh, i heard that you have um one of your favorite names from a character in a movie <laughs> yes the favorite my favorite character is also from the movie um ever after I absolutely love Angelica Houston, and I fell in love with her in the film um, Ever After as the character Rodmilla, the stepmother. <laughs> she was so subtle, but yet so evil. You know, she she was one you really just, you, you love to hate her. She had a way of making an evil character understandable and relatable, and, and somehow you felt empathy for her, but you still hated her. It was just, I don't know, she, with her little subtle eyebrow movement, after all that I've done, after all that I do, <laughs> you just see how offended she is, you know, but you, you, you feel for her. Yeah. Rodmilla is up there with Cruella. I love him. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So can you tell us about your traveling? Oh my gosh. Can you talk about that? Yes, I can. Um, and I did have one more fun fact I oh, wanted sure. to add to this list. It kind of came to me afterwards, but I'll, I'll go over these two that I have here. So I have 
one fun fact about me is that I've traveled to over 30 countries um, as um, for human rights activities in, in terms of education. So one particular trip that I did, I went to 16 countries on that trip, and I followed around uh, the woman who's the founder of an organization that teaches human rights. Um, there's a document the United Nations created um, after World War II, headed by Eleanor Roosevelt, called the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Very wordy, lengthy document written only a collegiate person could understand. And this woman took that document and converted it into a language a fourth grader could understand because that's when you need to learn about human rights. So my journey with her was to follow her around as she was meeting with government officials and dignitaries and politicos and educators and youth in these different countries. And it was an, quite an incredible experience. That's where I got most of those countries under my belt. But I have figured out somehow, some way to go places. And I get invited to work on projects and I get taken to you know, carry a camera or carry a notebook and take care of other people on whatever it is that they're doing. So I think if anybody wants to travel, you just, it starts with the decision that you just have to go. So you pack a bag and don't overthink it. You know, I'm going on a trip next week and I don't really even know what I'm going to do when I get there. I'm going somewhere in the United States, but I don't really have my plan flushed out because I think the whole thing about travel is that you want to meet people. And and I'm gonna tie this into COVID. Now that we can't meet people in person, I think that as soon as we're given the opportunity to really go out there and meet people and interact and socialize, we're just gonna be so much friendlier and so much more, you know, humankind will be more embraced and, and the social distancing will just come down and we'll just wanna hug people. I don't know if you remember being two years old and seeing someone you liked and you're like, oh, will you be my best friend? And you run up to them and you wanna just hug them. Same thing with the puppy. I think we will, as humans, go back to that. I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. Oh, me too. Yeah. And like hopefully um, we can recreate the ruined twenties after that and celebrate. And I love the fact that you, um, your travel included this amazing human rights educational work. So congratulations and thank you for doing that. And it just is so impressive and speaks to your um, your uh, your background and the type of My person. Character. Yeah, and your character, <laughs> which is just fabulous. And I'm glad to learn that about you, which is just enchanting to learn so many of the these amazing facts about people. And it's just really <sighs> impressive. And thank you. That's just our super wonderful. Um, and uh, and I'm glad that you shared that with us. And I hope that um, hopefully some of our listeners might might learn about that and teach their kids about that, too. Is there anywhere they can like um, learn more about that or how would they? Um, do sure, it? it's very easy. Youthforhumanrights.org. OK, great. I'm just going to repeat that for our audience. Youthforhumanrights.org. Org. Thank you so much, Leslie, for sharing that. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the programs are free and the booklets are free and, you know, the information is out there. It's it's. It's available, you know. Obviously, they're nonprofit and they accept donations. But my point is that the material—if you want to look at the booklet, you want to—I did casting for all of the public service announcements for that organization. Oh, so it's really great job uh, and, and fabulous. Over thirty, over thirty ads for them teaching kids about human rights. So, oh, very beautiful. Well, and and people, adults too, not just kids. But it's it's taught in a language that a fourth grader can understand. Because if a fourth grader can understand it, an adult can understand it. Oh, that's great. And then I, I would love it if yeah. you could just share, um, you know, how you started on your path to your career with our audience. Oh, yes, absolutely. And, and, and before I do that, I wanted to share one other little um, fun fact, uh, because we were talking about Pulp Fiction earlier. I was actually, actually an extra on Pulp Fiction. So I got to meet Quentin Kenton when I worked in Jackrabbit Slims when they were doing the little dance competition. Ah! Wow, that's <laughs> I was awesome. in the corner and there's a cameo of me in that film. If you really want to look it up, it's kind of nostalgic for me. Um, she goes to the, Uma Thurman goes to the bathroom and powders her nose. And when she comes back, she says, don't you love it when your food gets here? Um, he says something about the service sucks. We should have sat in Marilyn Monroe section. Um, or I, I don't remember who says which dialogue, but there's a cutaway because one of the characters says, which one? There's two. Oh, oh, Irma Thoman says, which one? There's two. And she goes, no. And, and um, 
John Travolta says, no, that's Marilyn Monroe. That's Mimi Von Doren. And so we're coming live from Los Angeles. Um, we just have like a slight audio delay. And Leslie was talking about how she was an extra on the set of uh, Quentin Tarantino's movie. And Uma Thurman and John Travolta was talking about the two Marilyn Monroe's. And he's like, no, one's Mimi Van Doren and one's Marilyn Monroe. And so she was an extra in that um, that scene. And so uh, she was sharing with that. I'm going to see if we get our... our um, Am I back? Am and, I here? And, Can and you hear me? she's back, yes. And Leslie is back. I was telling our audience how you were explaining in the scene that you were extra for Quentin Tarantino that there's two blondes that look like Marilyn Monroe, but you were saying, no, one's Le uh, uh, Mimi Van Doren and one's Marilyn Mimi Monroe. Mimi Van Doren. Yeah, and the other one's Marilyn right. Monroe. Right, and I'm the girl getting, Marilyn Monroe is serving coffee to a girl, and I'm that girl <laughs> in the nice. cutaway. Now, did you have real coffee or was it pretend <laughs> coffee? <laughs> Um, you know, I don't remember that detail. Oh, yeah. I was so enamored by the fact that she was giving me coffee. I did a little, oh, <laughs> kind of, you know, with my hands in the air, like, oh, she gave me coffee. It was kind of goofy. I didn't, didn't know what to do. <laughs> That's perfect. You know, I'm like, waiter, can I get a yeah. waiter? Can I get a waiter? We, we wish and, we could have a waiter yeah. right now. <laughs> can we get and a here's what I will do. I will tell you, actors... The way that I got featured in that, I was just background extra. I made friends with the first AD and the second AD. And that's how I got featured in that shot was because he said, let me see what I can do. And then he went to Tarantino and said, hey, when we do this cutaway, why don't we choose that person over there? And he said, OK, so work your connections when you're on set. Never know which friend you're going to make is going to help you get to the next layer. I love that hint. First AD in the 80s. Be kind and be kind to people on the set. And you know, I think that's it, it because when you're doing a set, so it's long hours and you know, everyone um is concentrating and has work to do. But yeah, just be kind to be nice and enjoy that you're part of the process. And you might get some of those little bonus treasures that you've been working for um and waiting for, you know, your big break, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my tip. <laughs> I love it. So you were, um, you started out at, at, in your high school at Actress in Theater and you did some dancing. I love that. Yeah, well, it was, you know, sort of an all around, you know, act, dance, sing. There was lots of, you know, opportunities in the community and in the high school. And I really um, gravitated towards the performing arts a lot and went to college thinking I was going to pursue that, but then ended up getting married. and in the marriage, my husband was a visual effects artist and I was an actress and we were both freelancing. So it was a bit tough because then a baby came. So I did a pivot and helped him with his career. And then fast forward another set of kids, I have twins and a divorce. I kind of had to figure out what I was gonna do with my career because I didn't make it in acting because I was focusing on him. And then um, one thing led to another and I got, uh, connected up with the woman who has the human rights organization. She wanted me to help her son go to film school by mentoring him with whatever information I had. Now, I didn't think of myself as an expert, but she still wanted me to give him what information I knew about the industry, which I did. And I made him a promise that if he went to film school, I would produce his thesis project, not knowing what I was offering, but still making the promise, you know, sure, I'll do that. Uh -huh, um, and fast forward another jump um, that came to happen and then the the music video united which was based on the human rights organization it was like a foundation the first year that they were in existence he shot and directed that and i produced united for him so it was just the three of us doing this little grassroots thing and it just took off and from there i partnered with another organization to do the ads for human rights and the director really wanted me to just focus on casting because I understood, like, he could look at their body of work and see that if we let them run the reins too much creatively, it was going to end up looking like their body of work. But they brought him in because they wanted it to look like his style. They wanted him to put his stamp on it. So for him to put his stamp on it, he brought me in to do the casting. And I was so grateful to just be immersed in casting and not have to worry about production as much that I just really thrived. And I just, my path to act, to, to casting is from my acting start because I love auditions. 
I'm kind of that crazy casting director. I will stand on my feet for 10 or 12 hours just doing auditions all day and loving it because I'm interested. I'm so present with the next one that comes in the room. And I'm willing to give the feedback and spend the time. And I know that's kind of grueling for some people, but I just really, I, I felt like I was missing something if I wasn't in the room watching the auditions. I want to see, I want to see, what are they doing? <laughs> what are they doing in there? Oh, wow. So that's how I solved it. <laughs> it sounds like you just had a natural gift for finding um, great talent, which is, which is a such a special skill because when you find those, the right um, actor, to bring the character alive. It is just beautiful, whether it's a TV show or a film. So congratulations on your your uh, career. It's amazing. And- um, Thank you. Yeah, and so, um, you know, this year, how has COVID affected your um, your casting? Have you had to make some changes with, uh, are you enjoying it being like, you know, online as opposed to in person? Well, to be honest, the last project that I did, um, the, the film Nomad, is it's not released yet, but I did all the casting for that virtually anyway. So I'm already set up to do things virtually. I do miss the in-person connection greatly. Um, and I think COVID has really impacted my line of work because I'm an independent, just like actors are independent. You know, I don't have a contract with the studio or a big film production company where there's always going to be work. I go from project to project. So that's been a little interesting because in the past, what I've done for my work model, it's you, you, you network, you go to mixers, you go to film festivals, you go to screenings, you know, um, and you meet people and you pass up business cards or you exchange phone numbers, you follow it up with a lunch. It turns into potential work or more referrals. Well, now I have to do all of that on the internet. So it's, and, and being um, responsive and, and being timely is, is key to establishing a connection, especially when it's online. If somebody pops up online and they say, hey, how's it going? You have to be there to answer right away. Whereas if you're at a mixer, you've got two or three hours and, you know, you, you can walk around and you see people and then you're done and you close the door and you go home, you know, but on the internet, you kind of have to be on 24 hours because you never know what, when someone else is in a different time zone when they're going to pop up, when they're available, it's it's a little bit more challenging to create meaningful relationships via the internet. Yeah. And is there anything that you said that um, um, Nomad, the film, is coming up this year? Are you um, are you working on some goals for 2021? Or do you think that COVID is going to be stopping some work? Or how is that, do you think, in 2021 that's coming up? For I, you? Unfortunately, I think COVID has put quite a bit of a damper on new work coming in. You know, um, Nomad, they had to shoot. It's an international film shot in 16 countries on seven continents with actors from all over the world. They did the shooting in three phases and they finished phase one and phase two, but they didn't get to do phase three wow. because of COVID yeah. and the travel restrictions. Oh, my gosh. So so for me, I, I don't have a lot of new work lined up. I have, you know, some things in the hopper, but there's no way to actually do the project. So it's a little hard to call an agent or an actor or a manager and say, hey, we want to book you in this project, but we don't know when it's going to film. And we don't, you know, can't really make any plans until we find out when the industry is going to release these restrictions. Right. Yes. And um, a, lot, so, a lot of the guests that come on here, that's the biggest thing. Like, you know, a lot of producer, writer, directors, casting directors, you know, we are all, you know, and the whole world is like, just like what's going to happen can we open up and can we, you know, you know, get, get back to some kind of, you know, normalcy, whatever that is. Um, so I'm wishing uh, the best for you and, and, you know, even to our listeners and, and, and our listeners can keep up with, catch up with you. You have a, a Instagram, you're at Leslie Brown casting. And then also you have mm -hmm. Instagram for your film, which is nomad the film that's n-o-m-a-d the film and then also your website so um producers and directors you can book leslie uh, leslie brown at lesliebrowncasting.com and she's also on linkedin at leslie brown casting that's correct yeah well leslie i enjoyed having you on the show and i just want to say thank you for coming on the show you are amazing and fabulous thank you you are amazing and fabulous <laughs> thank you. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in. Until next week, we wish you to have a happy and healthy and prosperous New Year.